Hi everyone, it's me, Moonshine, one-third of 8-Bit Fiction, and I'm a psychologist and a teacher, and sometimes it takes me three days to finish washing my dishes. Anyway, so um, last week I talked about compassion, and I got a few responses for that. Thank you for the people who reached out to me. But I wanted to respond directly to a question uh, posed by Louis. Okay, thank you very much for asking me this question. Louis asked, uh, how do you actually do this? How do you even begin? How do you start getting to know your feelings? How do you start understanding them? And, how, and therefore, how do you begin to give yourself compassion? Okay. Good question. Okay. I'm really glad you asked that. So that's what we're going to be talking about this week. So, in, in therapy, I do very often find myself asking that classic therapist question, how does that make you feel? And no matter how cliche it sounds or how much we mean this statement, it's actually really very important. How does this, that, event, person, thing, make us feel and very often my clients will be like I don't know and when I get that response I'm like I mean I don't know either but that's why we're here right I mean, that's why we're here to try to get to know yourself better and therefore get to know your feelings better and so we go through this process of really just trying to find out how they feel and that's what we're going to do today I'll try to give you a few tips that will help you really get to know yourself a little better by getting to know your feelings better. So, the first thing I tell them is, well, all right, you don't know how you feel, and neither do I. So let's spend some time here and get to know what you feel. And so what does that mean? Step one is really give yourself time. Give yourself time and space to process. And very often that's what we don't give ourselves. We just like, and then move on to whatever next thing um, that we were going to do. We don't allow ourselves to observe and notice and study what we feel. So number one is give yourself time. Um, literally. You can do this like at the end of the day when you recall what happened during the day. You can give yourself a few extra seconds before moving on to the next task or the next conversation. Um, you can do this whenever you have a pause, like while you're walking from one place to another, one conversation to another, one activity to another. Um, when you give yourself a few extra seconds, that allows you time and space to just give yourself a little extra process, which we don't usually give ourselves. So that's very important. If we don't give ourselves the time, then we'll never get to know these things. They may just ride under our awareness and then we lose them. But then some of them stay and those get a little bit more complicated. But let's talk about that another time, right? So number one is we gotta give ourselves time. Okay. And then number two is describe your feeling okay. or name your feeling. Um, sometimes we can't find specific words for our feelings and I'm here telling you that's very normal. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or you just uh, have a poor vocabulary. It doesn't matter. Okay. Not everybody describes their feelings in the same way. You can find the way that you can describe your own feelings in, in whatever unique idiosyncratic way that is true for you. And actually, the more unique to you, then probably the more accurate it is a description of your feelings. And um, yeah, sometimes it's not words. Sometimes some people describe their feelings through images, through metaphor, through um, story. Uh, you just have to maybe experiment a little bit, you know, like I, this week, 
I was feeling rather stretched. That's not a name for a feeling. That's not like sad, happy, angry. But you know what I mean, right? And if you're a follower of 8-Bit Fiction, oh, you know this place is full of feelings. But we say them in very different ways. But they seem to be understood anyway. So, try it out. Find ways to describe your feelings in whatever unique way you can. Just keyword is describe. Number three, and I find that number three for me personally is the most helpful. Uh, number three is find the feeling in your body. Because okay? feelings aren't just words, aren't just Feelings are not thoughts. Feelings are energies that we can actually feel physically in our physical body. So um, when I try to process feelings for myself and process feelings for my clients, I do ask this question. I ask, where do you feel that feeling in your body? And uh, I find that this is helpful because it makes the feeling more tangible instead of something that's vague and up in the air and abstract. When you realize that, oh, I feel happiness in the lightness of my shoulders. I feel calm in the looseness and lightness in my chest. I feel anger. Ooh, there is anger that I feel in the middle of my chest, but there's also a different anger that I feel in the pit of my stomach, and those are two different things. And so when we're able to do this, when we're able to describe our feelings in this way, we can also learn to differentiate the, the varied, like the gradations and the nuances between them. And yeah, this again also takes practice. Um, sometimes my clients or my friends, at first it's like, I don't know, I can't feel anything, okay? So at first it might be that you won't feel anything, you won't find it in your body, but I think with practice, the more you try to do it, the more sensitive you become and therefore like the clearer you are your view is of the feelings in your body, the more sensitive you become to it, then the more you'll be able to identify it. So don't worry if you find this difficult at first. Just, you know, bit by bit, maybe actually um, you will notice more sensations the more you practice. But at first it's just be like, okay, in general it's in my chest. In general it's in my stomach. Okay, um, And then you, the nuances will come out later as you do this. And then, okay, number four. Actually, number four is just a little reminder. Um, you can, because you can feel more than one feeling at the same time. And this can be very confusing at first, but this is actually very normal. Okay? Uh, when I do this for myself and when I do this practice for my clients, I actually ask them to sort through the feelings. Okay? For example, I ask, all right, what feeling is the most dominant at present? Okay? If you are feeling both angry and relieved, which is more dominant? Which is bigger? Which is smaller? Which is lighter? Which is heavier? So I just, you know, it helps us understand, okay, we have many feelings, but this one is the one that's taking up most of the space. This one is smaller, but it, you know we acknowledge it too. And then finally, number five is for you to really develop the skill and this ability to un know and therefore later on understand your feelings a little better. You have to do number five, which is you have to practice this regularly. So once a day, maybe before you go to sleep, or several times a day, maybe every time you brush your teeth, or after every meal. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be after an event that's particularly emotional. You can just practice it at random times of the day, actually. You know, after, um, yeah, at 
random intervals or at uh, scheduled intervals. And what you're actually practicing there is just the, the habit of pausing, okay, giving yourself time, of describing, okay, allowing yourself a way to uh, give words okay, or give a, yeah, a description of your feelings to yourself, finding where it is that you feel it in your body, and then finding out how to sort through them to see what is most uh, present, what is the biggest, most uh, dominant feeling, but also acknowledging the other feelings that are present. And if you do this regularly, then you will have a better grasp okay, of how you feel. And this really is step one of having developing understanding and maybe later on even a way to regulate them so that the feelings are things you feel and not just things that control you okay I think I asked answered my own I answered my own question. I was gonna end this video by saying, oh, well, why is this important? What good is it if we know our feelings? Well, okay. I reserve that for next week. Okay, so um, to Louie, okay, I will email you after this to tell you that I actually made a whole video to respond to you. But to everybody else watching this, thank you. Uh, again, you can contact me through email and as usual we are over there at the 8bitfiction.com and on twitter and on facebook thanks everyone see you next week